greet you in the name of the true and ever living God who bless you with my sanctifies. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be so acceptable in thy sight, O God, my rock and my salvation. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, in a world where all the us are change and decay, uncertainty and difficulties, how we humbly thank you and praise you that your goodness and grace are never changing. And that you are my ever present help in these troubled times. Even when our faith wears thin and our love grows cold, we humbly thank you, dear Lord, that you are our unchanging God, our unchangeable provider, and the lover of our soul. Praise your name, your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. The apostles asked Jesus to increase his faith. And Jesus replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Faith like a mustard seed. And when you think of a mustard seed, what is the size of a mustard seed? It is very small. But it will eventually grow to five to six feet tall. This week I was at a clergy conference and the bishop says, how do we, in our diocese, extend our life about discipleship? How do we become more in the face of Jesus in our communities. And I said to myself, well, I know we are doing that at St. Mark's. Because what I've been here a year to realize that there is faith like a mother, but faith like a mustard seed. Because the people at St. Mark's, or the St. Mark's family, say we will move this, and it happens. But it doesn't happen just all on its own. And then I said that maybe the bishop was at our retreat before Vestry. Because our Vestry decided that there are three ministries here we have that we are going to take focus. We are going to increase our faith to do even better than we are doing. Access out of the fourth. And I said to myself, how can I look at these ministries and look at our faith or be the discipleship of Jesus? And I said, I will stand as your leader at our welcoming station. And then I will extend the church down the driveway. And the first place I will stop is by our flying lines. And I'll say to ourselves, what is our faith and what are we doing in that ministry? And how can we do more to expand on that ministry? How can we look at the beauty of it and say, what am I as a servant of Jesus is adding to that? Yes, you are doing a lot. But Jesus also says, more is required of us. How can we make that ministry much better? How can we put up our hands and say, how can I help in the Flatlands ministry? We chose it. It then chose us. By choosing it, we have now have an, ob- an obligation to take the strength of our faith. And as we did in our formation this morning, we said we will do it what we were saying. We will do it what? With God's help. In our Flatlands ministry, some of us have taken on big challenges. But they didn't take it on by themselves. They took it, they took it on with the faith and the knowledge that the Lord will be here to support us. But as He is supporting us, He's asking us to come along with Him. And I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, that's one of the ministries. But 
as we as West Philly went a little further. And as we got down a little further down the driveway, we saw Las Polito. And we chose that ministry also to help those who needed help. We extended that ministry not on our property, but beyond our property. A ministry that is now growing, but cannot grow by itself. We chose them, they didn't chose us. So we have now taken responsibility to our faith and our work and our deeds to expand ourselves to get involved in that ministry. My brothers, we can easily say, my life is so busy. What is one more thing to do? Do I have the time? Be amazed to see when we put our minds to things, we make it happen. We have stepped out and chose those two ministries. We now have the obligation to achieve God's grace and true faith like the mustard seed to make it happen. And as I keep walking down the path, I saw the rights in school. Another ministry that I see that we have gone out in faith to help the least of these that Jesus told us about. Sunday, I, last Sunday, I felt funny. It was the first time in a long time I didn't go to church. I didn't go to church and I, I felt guilty. It was a Sunday morning and I wasn't going to church. And I said to myself, what would Jesus think of me? You're in, you're in Barbados, Father Gary? Are you on vacation? You're enjoying the sun, the beach, and you're not going to church. But I also remember that there were members of this church who knew that I had planned a walk for a foundation that was raising money for the needy people because COVID has been so ravaged with so many families without. And I know people have contributed to me walking that 6.6 miles. I didn't go to church. But the statement came to me and the Bible passage came to me. Here Jesus says, when you do it for the least of these, you do it for me. When you do it for the least of these, you do it for me. I wasn't in church, but I was doing the discipleship. I was walking for the ministry of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, we knew a couple of weeks I had a back problem, and then I started. I never thought I could make it to the end. I didn't. Really, I didn't just make the six and a half, six point six miles. I did it in an hour and forty minutes. I had no pain. Why? Because it was through God's grace and his faith. Because Jesus says, when you're doing it for the least of these, you're doing it for me. And to know that today, not me alone, but the contribution that the St. Mark's family has provided, there is someone today that will have food on their table because of our love and our faith and our ministries. I'm still walking down the path. I've left the rock, but I'm still walking down the path. And the builders of this beautiful church, who created a place that we could serve, left the trust for us to take care of a slave cemetery. There may be people there that are the spirits, but those who left in the trust made it so clear to us that they were so important that they didn't, they didn't tell us or they didn't pass it on a message. They left it in a trust. And they left funds for us to take care of it. We are now responsible and obligated to that ministry. Because those were the least of us in our community that would have helped build this place that we are now so proud of and enjoy so much. My 
brothers today, I'm asking you about the faith like the mustard seed, but more about the faith for us to grow. We do well, we have it well, but we do it by God's grace. And this is God's grace is sufficient. The journey we are on is not without challenges. You know, this morning, we baptized the Lord today. And if you listen to Paul's letter to Timothy, he said to Timothy, you were raised by your mother and your grandmother. That's how I know your faith and your love of Christ is so strong. This morning, we have the pleasure of another letter from Paul. But it was to the popes and the Tenzi. Because this morning they have mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. And I say that to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's the foundation of our church. That's the foundation of our church and the growth of families. As I said, I went to a home growing service and so I wanted a young man who read a lesson that wasn't read yet for me in church, and I'm going to hold him to it soon. He read at the home grace service. You know, I was at Pledge Conference, and I, I know they are lying, but I'm going to tell a secret anyway. We are getting our bishop, Sapphican, is retired. We are getting a new bishop, Sapphican. We already have been given a date from the new Sapphican Bishop for visitation on March 19th. And we are going to have confirmation, and we are going to have the acceptance of all our new members. And it's going to be one big service. Because I love confirmation. And just to let you know, there will be no mentors, there will be only one mentor. For confirmation classes. I will make the imprint on our inscription. Someone made the imprint on me. Try to count me. 53 years ago. I was nine. 53 and nine is 61. Huh? Who's the teacher is here? 53, huh? Thank you. See, I know the building. And I'm saying that to tell you this morning, my brothers and sisters, the faith of how we grow in church, the fundamentals of what we do, and how our bishop come. We are special, and I like to say that. So the new bishop can see the discipleship that we are creating here, the ministries that we are all about. She will see what St. Mark's, what I call it, the little church that punches a bite. It's great to have you. My brothers and sisters, the disciples ask Jesus for faith. And he says that you have faith that the mustard seed, you can tell the mulberry tree to move and go to the sea. We all have faith that the mustard seed, it is in us. He's just asking us to let it out. What is the song we just sang? Great is our what? Lord God, 